of the really fun topics we're going to talk about today is the design process, but more importantly, taking design from start to actual installation on a renovation landscape. And I know a lot of people are really interested in that, so it's fun to be able to talk to Corey Brabeck and Ann Hauser from Kinghorn Gardens about just exactly how that process works. So Corey and Ann, welcome to Lifestyle Gardening. Hey Kim, it's great to be here. Hey Kim, great to be here as well. So let's start with a couple of questions that are pretty essential. And that would be, how do you start building that good relationship with a client that does lead you guys to co-create the right design for those clients? I think a relationship with a client starts with the client themselves, uh, getting to know the client, getting to know their past history, maybe where they grew up, um, maybe what their childhood was like. And then you can kind of relate that into the current existing uh, home or landscape that they're in, whether that be a new home, whether that be an older construction type home, or maybe the home where they lived previous. Um, I agree, Corey. I think that's a great thing is to figure out the history of our clients. And I also think it's really important to do a good job for every project that we do, because that way we get referrals. And so they see us down the street and they know that we did an, a wonderful job for their neighbor and they want us to be able to do the same thing for them. What's really fun is when you get a client um, where you have done work for some of their family or maybe even their parents. And uh, those type of referrals are really exciting. And that also helps us to get to know the client a lot faster and also just maybe lets us in on that picture of what their childhood was like. And it is really different within families themselves, too. Like, you know, we have multiple generations of clients in our in our organization. And sometimes what the parents want is completely different from what the kids want. So it's, you know, you really need to get to know the people that you're meeting with and the garden that they want and what they really think is going to make them happy. Okay, so Ann and Corey, do you start with what the client wants or do you start with what they actually have? Is there really a right way to do that? Does it make any difference? And how do you help them articulate what they want and what they need and whether those are actually the same thing? I think it's interesting for people because sometimes what they want is different from what they have. And, you know, sometimes we can make those changes and sometimes we can't. So you really need to listen to the client. You really need to get to know what they're saying to you and really truly embrace what they're going for so that you can understand what the end result is for them that's really going to kind of make this a successful experience for them in their garden. And a lot of times when we're meeting with a client, it may be uh, a landscape or a situation that they're inheriting or that they just purchased. Uh, it may also be brand new. It may be a new construction. And so you're kind of walking into it with two different um, point of view, I would per se. Um, you know, sometimes we have to work with what they have and maybe they want us to work with what they have. And other times it's just a clean slate. So a lot of it depends on that. There's two different ways to look at that. So let's take a walk through the park, or in this case, your process from that initial meeting with those clients to sitting around their beautiful fire pit with friends and family after you've finished your work with their landscape project. After that initial meeting, we do come back and we work on the designs for the clients. We sometimes float conceptual ideas back to them. Sometimes we send them pictures to try to make sure that that's, you know, we're headed in the right direction. That's really important for us to try to do, to really listen and get them going in the right direction with our first um, design. Um, once we have the design completed, we present the design to the client with pictures of every plant that we have on the site and even um, inspiration photos to show them what we think and what we're, what we're reaching for in terms of the end result for their garden. And then, with that presentation, we typically show them a proposal for the work to be done. And once they sign off on that work, our, our design gets turned over to the installation crews and they get it on the schedule. And once the schedule comes up for this client to have their project worked on, then we get out there with a crew who works hard and is really dedicated to the craft of what we do and the real and the design intent that comes with each individual design. So we the designers work with those install crews on site and they do a wonderful job. They take care of the property, they clean up, they do an amazing job. And then once it's over, we do a walkthrough with the client 
and then we toast the garden. You know, sometimes it's a, it's a little bit of a celebration when we get those gardens done. Anne spoke quite a bit about the design intent of the garden, the actual design. And what's really important is meeting with the client after uh, the installation and years down the road to discuss how the garden is performing and if it's performing in the ways that they would like. Um, and it's also, it's up to us to make sure that as we garden and help them take care of that initial space, that we follow the design intent, the original intent that the designer instilled um, as far as the dream goes. So um, that's very important. A lot of times we see landscapes or gardens installed and or created and the design intent is often lost. So it's very important that we follow that original dream and keep that in place. So I'm guessing in all the years you've worked with landscapes and with clients, you've probably run across situations where either the existing site or the situation itself and what the client wants are such a terrible match that you really can't figure out a way to resolve that. What do you do then in terms of your design process to help get that back on track? I think in that situation, it's very important to be aware of um, other people out there in this industry that can help you. Um, it's really good to have good relationships with people in the industry because, you know, we're not all experts at what we do. There are many times we need to ask for help. Um, there are certainly things we are very, very good at, but there are also times when we need to call and ask for assistance or maybe just other ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think too, you know, there are times when a client has a goal and a big dream that they want to fulfill in their garden. And sometimes maybe the plant material isn't quite the right fit for what their site in their environment, if their garden allows for. But there's oftentimes plants that can be substituted into those places so that they can have a similar effect without necessarily being a duplicate of what they have torn out of a magazine or shown us on their Pinterest board. And maybe one final question in this short segment, and that would be, is there a typical timeline for a start to finish project for working with a client on that renovation project from start to finish? That's a really good question, because I don't think there's anything typical about we do, what we do in a day. Um, you know, every project is unique and different. Some projects we start when the homeowner buys a property. Sometimes we even start before they buy the property and they ask us for help to direct them as to which property might be better. Um, sometimes it involves construction. Sometimes it's just remodeling. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we just have this, uh, just this renovation in a garden. So really there is a whole spectrum of what typical is for a garden design group like ours. So it's really hard to give a, a true answer to that, that question because there is nothing typical about what we do every day. Thanks, Corey and Ann, for actually doing the interview with us on this really great and timely subject. And of course, we are really looking forward to carrying the whole project through the season on Backyard Farmer.